it's a beautiful tradition here everything back then was linked to cycles of nature very deeply this particular purnima full moon which comes just before the beginning of the monsoons thousands of years ago in india sages realized the importance of this particular full moon night for many reasons but one of one of the most profound reason was from this day period of 4 months of monsoon starts in india if you see the nature of monsoon it pushes you indoors you can't go out we linked it with sadhana with spiritual practice from this day starts a period called chaturmas four profound months when throughout the india monsoon will be at its full glory you're not supposed to go out so a lot of wandering monks and sadhus who would usually continue to keep walking around the country on this day on this full moon on this purnima they will stop they will make a base in some hermitage some forest somewhere in some ashram and for these four months they'll go much deeper in their spiritual practice because there's just no connection anymore with the outside world many of them would just lock themselves for these four months of chaturmas it was totally synchronized with the messaging of the nature these four months if you see when the monsoon is there after a few days of full monsoon things start to become very silent sometime in the hills we say that things are becoming very gloomy it's actually not gloomy it's actually becoming very silent no activity zone nothing to do outwardly because we are so much in the mind and we are so much into the action this pause we think is gloominess but this pause is not gloominess this is like the evening the whole day looks like an evening even now if you see 11:30 in the morning looks like evening or early morning and these were two times we always used it in india for spiritual practices we will do our sadhan sandhya we will do our puja during these two times definitely now the entire waking hours are like this it's an indication from the nature to stop or slow down the outer activity to go inward take a pause be still and intensify your sadhana which is spiritual practice because this marks the beginning of chaturmas this particular purnima full moon it's interesting almost every spiritual tradition in india consider this particular full moon extremely extremely powerful and auspicious that's the reason we call it guru purnima we attribute we dedicate this particular day to our gurus and this is across all spiritual traditions in india become little more cozy <laughs> thank you sir spirituality also means dropping all the boundaries <laughs> yeah we consider shiva as the adi guru and there's a reason for that 
when he spoke 112 meditation techniques to devi the scripture became very popular vikyan bhairav tantra there are 112 meditation techniques which shiva told shared with devi for the well being of mankind human kind i personally feel that any spiritual tradition across the globe any nation any civilization any tradition any spiritual tradition all the practices that they follow are somewhere coming from these 112 techniques there's nothing beyond this and as the story goes on this particular full moon night they were seven disciples of shiva they were for eons praying to shiva to become to actually be accepted as disciples bold underlined to be accepted as disciples it has a relevance i'll talk about this for eons they prayed to shiva to be accepted as disciples but shiva was just not bothered when you are into too much of bliss you just too inward too recluse inside but the persistent prayer of these seven rishis we call them sapt rishis the seven great rishis on this particular day somehow shiva opened his eyes saw the sapt rishis the seven rishis still sitting there in meditating position and praying to shiva and he decided to actually accept them as his disciples and on this day for the very first time shiva taught the science of life the art of spirituality the purpose of human existence and the way to achieve that purpose to these seven rishis that's one of the reason we dedicate this day or we call this day as guru purnima dedicated to the adi guru and then i believe these seven rishis went into different directions across the globe and taught the science and practice of spirituality wherever they went and they traveled a lot on foot or maybe they flew i don't know with this there is another beautiful ancient story of this day there are four great scriptures in india called vedas four vedas the rishi who undertook the task of compiling these vedas not writing compiling this knowledge is a sage called vedavyasa it is also on this day that vedavyasa was born to rishi parashar there is a parashar lake not far from here and also on this day vedavyasa undertook the compilation of brahma sutras he was born also on this day he also started the compilation of brahma sutras on this day very profound let's come back in from the history a little bit right now so far i was talking about 10000 18000 years ago now 2500 years ago times of buddha and i love this story during his days of uh, trying to attain nirvana he was following many paths many things he was trying to do a time came when he was doing so much of tapasya this his body almost gave up when he realized that without the body i cannot do my sadhana my tapasya he started eating food before that he was just living on one grain of rice a day and there were five friends who had joined buddha he was still siddhartha by that time 
these five friends who were with him in his sadhana, they were also doing their sadhana. So these six were doing their practices together. But when they saw Buddha eating, they thought he's fallen. Siddhartha has become corrupted. He's dropped his woes. He started eating. He's too much in the body. He's too attached to the body. That's the reason he started eating. He's too afraid to die. That's the reason he started eating. And they left him. Buddha must have felt deep pain of these five close associates and sadhak friends leaving him. But then he just sat and sat and just sat. Maybe it was the same time of Chaturmas, I don't know. But he just sat. And then one day he caught what he was looking for, the truth, the moksha, the nirvana. And when he got that, there was deep compassion in his heart. And the first thought came to him was of these five friends who had left him. He felt a pain in his heart that maybe they've still not found it. Maybe they're still struggling. I have found it. What should I do? I should actually look for them. And he started looking for them and he finally found them at a place called Saranath. This is near Varanasi. He found these five friends still trying various things and meditating at Saranath. Buddha went to them. First they tried to ignore him, shun him, joke about him, etc. But they when they saw this Siddhartha coming and with the grace Siddhartha was walking, they felt something has shifted in him. They felt something has opened up in Siddhartha. And on this particular day, full moon of the monsoon, on this particular day, Buddha met these five friends and gave the first sermon, first teaching of Dharma to these five friends. And they became Buddha's first five disciples on this particular day. And the wheel of Dharma, as they say, the wheel of Dharma started moving from this very day. So even in the Buddhist tradition, it's a very important and profound day of Guru Purnima. So in the Jain tradition, in the Sikh tradition and so many other traditions. Look at your own fortune today. On this very day, we are listening to this satsang. On this very day, we are sitting in the presence of Adi Guru. On this very day, we are all sitting as a Sangha who are somewhere trying to attain their own Nirvana, find their own truth. It, it is very rare. Maybe we are the chosen ones because this whole world out there who is still doing their daily chores, shops, business, jobs, whatever. But somehow nature inspired us, our own sadhana inspired us to be here today in the presence of Adi Guru. But there is something very funny. I meet a lot of people and almost everybody is trying to run away from the Guru. Almost everybody is trying to make YouTube as a Guru. Almost everybody is trying to find a book and make that book as a Guru. While the whole Indian tradition has been about Guru Shishya Parampara, my own experience says without that, Forget about truth. 
even the glimpse of truth is impossible there is something in us which does not allow us to go near the guru or even accept anybody or even accept somebody as a guru yes if somebody is dead then we are very happy to have that being as a guru because there is no cross questioning back anymore you're free to do what you feel like doing you're free to interpret the teaching the way you want we want to retain that freedom our minds have become our guru in this yoga whatever our mind says we do that we could give it beautiful definitions and names but actually we becoming slaves of the mind and we think our mind is our guru who is guiding us correctly it has never happened ever in history that anybody's mind has guided them in the right way on the right path it has never happened in human history bring me one example of that you can't find you can't find there are three distinctions i want to share with you today very important there are three words i'm going to share with you please check where you are out of these three words first is called a follower second is called a devotee third is called a disciple let me explain what this is we all know about followers right instagram followers and we know follower thing but technically what is who is a follower technically let's understand that when you are impressed by somebody it could be somebody's looks somebody's work somebody's way of speaking somebody's way of walking somebody's way of doing things somebody way of dressing up in a certain way and you become impressed with any of these element when you become impressed with any of these element you start to follow that person it's the most uh cheapest thing cheapest in terms of economic value <laughs> there's no cost in world area yeah? it's at the bottom level then out of some followers remember we talking in context of guru out of some followers in some people for some reason a reverence wakes up reverence towards that person wakes up when the reverence arises these followers become devotees but it's still a relationship from the far i am somebody's devotee because there is definitely a reverence actually there are two things there is a i am impressed by that person and then there is reverence also i become a devotee but i'm still not doing anything i'm just listening to this person i'm just watching this person i'm just reading about this person but i'm not doing anything i'm a devotee still i have not put my skin in the game i'm still little far i'm still in the safe zone as to say or i'm still in the comfort zone when i'm a devotee then somehow out of the devotees some people graduate they have a very strong will to know the truth usually they have very strong intensity of their being 
they want to put their skin in the game they want to just put everything that they have in the process they don't want to hold back anything they don't want to hold back anything आप उनसे पूछ लीजिए इफ यू वॉन्ट्स टू सिट ऑन द स्टूल या प्लीज देन सिट ऑन द स्टूल इट्स लिटिल वॉर्म टूडे राइट इज इट अनकंफर्टेबल एनी बडी इज इट अनकंफर्टेबल If you feel it's uncomfortable you're still a follower <laughs> in the category I'm not talking about me <laughs> Don't feel any discomfort it's all here If the body wants to shed some sweat it's very good for the body actually allow the body to release some sweat it's very healthy for you and maybe this is your own inner tapas you understand tapas the the fire of sadhana maybe it's your own inner tapas which is making you feel warm so don't worry about that some of the first indication starts to happen when you are on a spiritual path is that you become very uh, what is the word uh disconnected from the comforts of weather for you the space is important where you are for you the process is important not the heat or the cold of it you transcend that so mark this as a measurement of your spiritual growth so to say body will feel the heat or cold i'm not saying body will not feel it body will feel it but your mind will not trouble you yes it's warm yes it's warm are you uncomfortable no that's how it is anyways coming back to the third layer so out of some devotees some people who are very intense or very focused for this sadhana they grow up and transcend to become disciples in hindi we call them shishyas remember the story i shared with you the saptarishi is the seven great rishis of india they were praying to their guru for hundreds of years the guru was just not even looking at them then one fine day the compassion arose and the guru adi guru accepted them as his disciples it's a rare thing disciplehood is a rare thing and without disciplehood journey is impossible so what is happening now in the disciple there is impression yes the disciple is impressed by adi guru for sure number 2 yes the disciple also has the quality of a devotee which means there is a reverence the disciple has for adi guru but then he is also build the third quality there is a deep surrender in the disciple towards the guru and this surrender is of a different level altogether now the relationship between the guru and the shishya guru and the disciple now the relationship becomes very intimate 
it's the intimacy of this relationship which does the magic it's not the content it's also not the closeness to the guru you could be living with the guru and you could still not be a disciple so everybody who lives with a guru is not necessarily a disciple they could be devotees they could be followers but unless this transition happens from a follower to a devotee from a devotee to a disciple the real spiritual sadhana or journey does not happen it's only at this point when the journey really starts before that it's all pre work before that it's all cleaning up you're clearing up the system so to say you're preparing the soil before that you're preparing the soil but only when the relationship enters into this space the seeding happens and the journey takes off from there you must all think about it where are you are you a follower are you a devotee or are you a disciple has your guru accepted you as a disciple because follower and devotee is a one way relationship but disciplehood is a two way relationship the guru must also accept you as a disciple it's a two way relationship and when that happens the magic starts to happen not before that i have seen thousands of cases and this formula fits in perfectly well this is exactly how it happened i used to think earlier i have been with some great masters and i used to think earlier there are hundreds and thousands of people around them why don't i see a spark in the people around why don't i see a transformation in the people around what is the missing point they live with the guru practically huge ashrams they live with the guru in the ashrams but why still in their eyes satya moksha ananda is not there and then later on i realized these are the steps this is how it works you could live in an ashram you could live with a guru for thousands of years but unless you've graduated apart from the being impressed apart from having reference reverence unless this deep surrender arises journey does not take off i'm sharing this with you based on my own life's experience i don't know if this is mentioned in any book i don't know i've not studied i've experienced sadhana and journey like this you miss this you miss this life nothing happens only this will become little more fatter loaded with lot of content yeah but that's no guarantee of any transformation how we together on this wonderful and it take it's a massive jump to actually become a disciple have you heard about a a great being in india called sai baba sai baba the great sai baba yeah of shirdi do you know how many disciples he had hello make a guess how many disciples sai baba of shirdi had in lakhs in lakhs anybody else 12 why 12 it's a sacred number the disciples of shirdi 12 right no not 12 Make a guess. Anybody else? One million. A million? Maybe no. 
you'll be shocked to know this sai baba of shirdi just had one disciple just one disciple no he was still in the body yeah in fact disciple left before him and it is said that in his entire life <coughs> sai baba just cried once when this disciple died in front of sai baba and devotees asked and followers were in millions devotees were in thousands disciple one so all the followers and the devotees asked sir you such a great being you are an avatar you are crying and sai baba shed three tears just three tears only three tear three tears in his entire life so followers and devotees are sir number one we are confused you cried you are an avatar number two we are confused who shed just three tears if you sad then you you know you cry a lot why three teen aansu hi kyun sirf sai baba said that this person had just given his life for me he was so surrendered that even if i asked him to go and jump from that hill he'll not even think twice forget about questioning he'll just go walk and jump he was in too much of love with sai baba he said but when he left the body three strong karmas were still left if those karmas are not gone he will be born again i don't want that to happen i'm his guru this much i can do so with each tear one pending karma was out and the disciple attained perfect nirvana now this kind of thing happens rarely only with the disciples only with the disciples so you don't have to pay any cost to become a follower nothing you don't have to pay any cost even to become a devotee one way traffic but disciple your life is online if you really willing to die not in in body of course that will happen to all of us but die in your ego only then you could become a disciple and only then the journey could progress otherwise it's all circles and it's all circus oh that's a rhyme no <laughs> otherwise it's all circle and it's all circus nothing is really happening i want you to think about it deeply don't take spiritual life and the opportunity that you have got in this life don't take it lightly why do i say this i have traveled across the world a lot and i have met some great sadhaks across the globe most of them would cry deeply whenever they are on the airport to see me off and i ask them why why are you crying they're not crying for me they crying crying for this land they always felt that somehow if we can come to india which is the land of truth moksha spirituality nirvana something could shift in them that's the deeper layer of 
this nation. All the above layers, you can ignore them. Somebody's fleecing you, fleecing you? Is fleecing the right word? Yeah, fleecing you for money or whatever. Just ignore all of that. That's a... It's like a test. That do you get stuck there? Or do you have eyes as a seer to see deeply beneath that what is there beyond this layer? We all get fleeced. But there is something beyond this layer in India. Don't miss this. If you are born on this land, don't miss this. There is something very special on this land. Every part of this land is oozing wisdom. Really. Every part of this land is oozing deep ananda if you are able to touch it and feel it. And if you are visiting this land, then again don't miss it. You don't know when and for how long will you get this opportunity. Geopolitical keeps changing. But this is extremely important, profound. If you are here, make full use of it. Nothing else should be your target. Nothing else should be your focus. This and this alone. And I guarantee you, if you increase your focus and your intensity, you will get it. It all depends, do you have that courage and intensity and one-pointed madness. I am not saying one-pointed attention. One-pointed madness. You have these three things. You will take home Shiva with you or Buddha with you or whosoever you, you believe in. So today's Guru Purnima, it is important that we remember our Gurus. Whosoever has ever contributed in our life, whosoever has ever helped us become who we are, this is the day to pay back to remember them, feel deep gratitude for them, feel deep reverence for them, surrender, I don't know if you will be able to feel that or no, but feel it, pay back to all the Gurus, remember all the Gurus as we enter into the Yajna today, with that, These are just not words. If you hear them or relate with them just as words, you'll miss something again. Don't miss it this time. Yeah. I feel that the Guru ke vishay mein jitna bola jaye kam hai. Guru ki mahima ke vishay mein jitna bola jaye kam hai. I feel that no matter how much I speak about the importance of Guru, it's still less. This is one phenomena which I feel sad that we miss. I feel what should I do so that we all just get it. But in my last, one last attempt I'll do again. <laughs> An analogy which mentally you will surely understand. Heartfully, I'm not sure. It's like saying the Adi Guru, Shiva, is everywhere. And I'm sitting here. How do I connect with this? I don't know. Mentally, I know it's everywhere. But how do I connect? I do not know. To give you an analogy. Electricity is everywhere. And there is this phone instrument. This instrument is like you. Electricity is like Shiva. 
electricity is everywhere the phone is also there unless you have a charger it's of no use it will just become dead in 24 hours and you meaning this phone directly cannot do anything while there is plug there while there is electricity there the phone knows there is plug there there is electricity there but the phone still cannot do anything about it despite this knowing it needs a charger some instrument <coughs> which can simplify shiva plug it into this device and this device gets recharged with Shiva. Shiva is energy, no? Electricity. This device gets recharged with Shiva. But there is a problem now. Which means you will be dependent on the charger, which is a guru. Right? No. As you evolve, as you evolve, you enter into next stage where you don't need to plug anything. You just put it on something and it charges. <laughs> Right? Right? So dependency is becoming less. I'm telling you the next phase of technology. Where it will be automatically connected to the power source. Right? This technology is under development. You don't need to charge it. There's something in this which is automatically connected to the unseen energy or electricity. And whenever the battery goes 50% down, it just gets recharged on its own. This is how the spiritual evolution also happens. You develop a capacity within when you are continuously connected to the power source called Shiva. No plug is needed anymore. The charger has done its job. You've moved up. You've advanced. In the spiritual tradition we say that is the time when your inner guru awakens. Now the outer charger, outer guru, you just bow down to him or her, keep him or her in your heart, in your atma, but now you are connected to the inner guru. This is exactly how it works. But before the technology advances, your own spiritual technology advances to that stage, you will be dead unless you have a charger. This is how spiritual life works. This is my last attempt today <laughs> to tell you the importance of Guru. No matter what stories you've heard, what nonsense we've carried in our heads for so long, but this is the importance of a Guru. Without this, this instrument is of no use. Maybe it's a million dollars, no use. With that, we shall enter into the Yajna. We are all sold to Adi Guru, to the Shiva. So, we do Yajna, offering the Yajna, offering ourselves to Adi Guru in this Yajna. I'm repeating again, offering ourselves to Adi Guru in this fire of the Adi Guru. We'll do yajna on the mantra of uh, Mahamritunja mantra. Again, it's important to quickly understand the meaning of it. Om Triyambakam Yajamahe Sugandhim Pushkivardhanam First part of the mantra is saying, Oh, the great three-eyed one, O oh, you who has the fragrance of flowers, because of your fragrance, there is fragrance all around on this earth. Because of you, there is nourishment all around in the, in the world. O oh, three-eyed one. You remember I said, how do you become a disciple to a guru? You first praise. He does not want your praise. He is beyond all of that. But you still praise because that's your own inner expression. You express what you feel. So the rishis and the disciples and all of us feel that for Shiva, that O oh, three-eyed one. Because of you there is nourishment and sugandha which is fragrance in the world. Because of you the life has become worth living, otherwise there is just no worth in this life. Just because of you, O oh, Shiva. 
उर्वा रुक में वो बंदना मृत्यु और मोक्ष मानता ओ लॉर्ड ओ शिवा द वे अ फ्रूट ripens on the tree or the vine and once the fruit is ripened only then the fruit is dropped unripened fruits never drop o oh shiva make me also ripen like the fruit and only then allow me to drop what does this mean we all understood it wrong we felt we are saying that give us long life when i have ripened in the ripe old age only then i should leave the body no the rishis are saying make me ripe with your dhyana make me ripe with your bhakti make me ripe in your devotion make me ripe so i also achieve shiva tattva shiva your element so that i also receive i also achieve my own shiva hood make me ripe like that and only then take me away and the power of this mantra is such it works on every living being even if you don't understand the meaning the mantra the power of the mantra still works on you your buddhi may not understand it but your cells do understand it because your cells are millions of years old in some incarnation they have heard and chanted this mantra your cells know this mantra even if your current buddhi does not know does not matter so this mantra this invocative mantra works on all living beings it also works on beings who've departed beings who are not in the physical form anymore at least 40 days when somebody leaves the body up to 40 days the mantra still works on them as if it works on a physical body so we lost her father few days ago it's under 40 days remember him invoke this mantra for him send the vibration and the message of this mantra to him let him also achieve mukti this is the mantra of mukti salvation liberation moksha let him also achieve that with that bhav with that remembrance with that deep intensity you chant this mantra